Uh, unit 3, Lesson 6, Sprites. As you can see, this is a long lesson, so let's get to it. In order to create more interesting and detailed images, the class is introduced to the sprite object. Every sprite can be assigned an image to show, and sprites also keep track of multiple values about themselves, which will prove useful down the road when making animations. At the end of the lesson, everyone creates a scene using sprites. Vocabulary, we have property, attributes that describe an object's characteristics, and sprite, a graphic character on the screen with properties that describe its location, movement, and look. Here's some new code. Let's get started. So either watch this video as a class or by yourself, depending on what your teacher wants. Okay, so sprites. Let's look at this. A sprite is the name we give to a collection of values in Game Lab that represents a character in a story, animation, or game. A sprite can be stored in a variable with a label, but unlike values you've stored in variables before, such as numbers, a sprite lets you store many related values all under the same label. This will probably make sense by the end of the lesson. Creating a sprite. You can create a new sprite using the create sprite block. So let's take a look at our toolbox. Okay, and it's in the sprites drawer. Okay, you can create a new sprite using this block. So this is a sprite, the sprite as drawn on the screen. In this case, our sprite is located at 200, 200 in the center and has been assigned the animation bunny. Two, so look at that. The create sprite block. Okay, this is the create sprite block. And notice it's inside of a variable block, which creates a new sprite at 200, 200 and assigns it to the variable label my bunny. Note that just creating the sprite doesn't yet draw it on the screen. That will happen later. Three, the set animation block. The sprite.setAnimation block assigns an animation or image to the sprite. In this case, we're using an animation named Bunny, which was added in the Animation tab. Here's the Animation tab up here. Okay. Uh, notice, did I already read that? So that it changes, hmm, where were we? Notice that instead of the default variable name, Sprite, we've updated this to MyBunny.setAnimation so that it changes the animation of the My Bunny sprite. Four, draw sprites. Because sprites are just values stored as variables, they don't automatically get drawn on the screen. The draw sprites block tells Game Lab to draw all of the sprites that have been created onto the screen. So after creating the sprite with these blocks, you have to actually add in this draw sprites block to make it appear. All right. Sprites. Creating sprites. Variable sprite equals create sprite. This block creates a new sprite and assigns it to a variable. The default name is sprite, so you'll want to change it to something more meaningful. Drawing sprites. Sprites only appear on the screen when you draw them there. Calling draw sprites, this block, will draw all of your created sprites on the screen. Do this. This program includes comments that let you know where to place code, but otherwise is blank. Your program should look like the image on the right, so it should look like this. Add the variable sprite equals create sprite 200 200 under the comment creating sprites. Okay, this is the comment creating sprites. So let's add this block, which is under the sprites drawer. And it's already filled out, so we're going to add it here. Uh, add... You can ignore the yellow triangle. Okay, this triangle. For now, it's just telling you that you haven't used your sprite yet. Add draw sprites under the comment drawing. So here's the drawing comment. And in the world to, uh, drawer, we have draw sprites. We're going to put that under there. Run the code to draw your first sprite on the screen. Awesome. Hint, sprites are drawn from their center, which means that the center of the square, not the top left corner, is at 200, 200. So 200, 200 is in the center right there. Okay, great. 
When run, where will the sprite, my sprite, be located? Okay. Well, B is already selected. So hopefully, uh, it looks like that's probably the answer. Yep. So, I just gave you the answer, B. I wish they didn't do that, but that is the answer. Yes, correct. Awesome. Here, actually, let's review this. So, the reason it's at uh, top right corner is because this is the X coordinate and this is the Y coordinate. So, if we look at the coordinates right here, okay, we're at Y 100, so there, this is about 300, 100, and that's where it will show up. <laughs> Debug. This program should create two new sprites. Okay, it only creates one though. Okay. One on the left of the screen and one on the right. But it's only drawing one. You don't need to add any code. Just rearrange the code already present to make sure that both sprites show up, like the picture on the right. Okay, so it should look like this, but obviously it doesn't. And the reason is, hopefully you can figure this out, is the order of the code. We have draw sprites in the middle. If we put it at the top, nothing gets drawn because the order of the code matters we want it to be at the bottom okay because that is saying okay everything above line three needs to be drawn if it's at the top it's saying okay everything above line one needs to be drawn and there's nothing above line one okay this is another video that you will either watch as a class or by yourself depending on your teacher why is my page freaking out well the animation tab okay so we were talking about this before you will have an animation tab in the top left of your uh, drawing space and that's where it is you can either code or animate in Game Lab, animations are drawings or other images that you can use to change the look of your sprites. You can use the sprite.setAnimation block to change your sprite's animations to any of the animations that you have added in the Animation tab. Okay, so clicking on the Animation tab allows you to pull up this tab. Let's scroll down. Hopefully, hopefully my screen will stop freaking out. Okay, number one. Oh god, this is annoying. Number one, use these buttons to switch between the animation tab and the code tab. I just uh, displayed that, these two. Okay, so number two is pointing to the bunny animation. It says, this column shows all of the animations you've created. Uh, number three, click the plus sign to add a new animation. Okay, yeah, add a new animation. Four, the drawing tools in this column. This is that column. The drawing tools allow you to draw or modify animations. Number five, here's where you can edit or draw the image on your canvas. And number six, uh, open this drawer up to change the overall size of your image or canvas. So this will enlarge the canvas. Well, I'm glad we're done with this level or exercise. Okay, images. Over on the animations tab, so here's the animation tab. Over on the Animations tab, you'll see three images that have been loaded for you. You can get to the Animations tab by clicking the Animation button above the display area. Once you have created a sprite, you can use the Sprite.SetAnimation command to change the look of your sprite from a rectangle to a picture. All the images you have loaded in the Animation tab show up in the Sprite.SetAnimation dropdown. The alien is set up for you as an example. Okay, so the alien. Okay, this is showing because we have this drop down set to alien. If we click the drop down and choose bunny, the bunny should appear. Yes. So do this. Change the sprite to your favorite image. So mine is a, a bunny. A sprite that is set to an image has already been created for you. Run the code to see how it works. We already did all this. Change the input to the set animation command, which is here to change the look of the sprite. Try out all the different images. Okay, so we tried out Bunny, we tried out Alien. Let's try out Flybot. 
Cool. Okay. Upload your own image. You can also use the animation tab to upload or draw your own image. Do this. You are going to make a flying kite. You can search the web for an image or create a new animation from scratch by drawing your own kite. Download your kite image. Uh, download. Your, okay, so do this. Download your kite image. Images with transparent backgrounds work best. Okay, so let's do image search kite images. All right, transparent background. This is a good one. I right click on it. I click save image as. I like to click desktop. And I'm gonna, I don't like this name. This is a terrible name. Rename it, please. Kite.jpg. Cool. It's downloaded. Let's go back here. Uh, okay, so we did this. Now we want to move on to open the animations tab. Okay, well, once we open the animation tab, this instructions will disappear. So click plus and then upload to upload an image. Okay. Upload an image. Okay, let's, uh, let me slow that down. I clicked this. Okay. And let me go to my desktop and cut. Perfect. I double clicked it and now it appears. So let's go back and see what they want us to do. Select the file from your computer. Rename your image so it is easy to remember. I already renamed it. Oh, it's not, no, no, no. Yeah, I don't think we want, I don't think we want uh, any of that. I think we just want kite. Okay, rename your image. Okay, back in code mode, use sprite.setAnimation to make your kite sprite show your new animation. Okay, don't worry if your kite image. Okay, so where's the sprite.setAnimation block? It's in the sprites drawer. Let's put this, okay, right underneath the variable of kite that was already created. Let's click this drop, drop down and it has kite for us. So let's see if it draws at 350. Huh. So we can't figure out what sprite is. Okay. That's a problem. This says sprite. What should it say? Maybe you don't know, but it should say kite because that's the variable we're referring to. So let's put kite there. Okay, now it works. Okay, don't worry if your kite image is too big. You'll learn how to fix that in the next level. So my kite image is too big, but we're going to fix that in the next level or exercise. 11. Resizing with scale. In the sprites drawer of the toolbox, you'll see a new block called sprite.scale. So in the sprites drawer of the toolbox, okay, sprite.scale. It lets you change the size of a sprite in relation to its original size. For example, sprite.scale equals 1 is the normal size. Sprite.scale equals 0.5 makes your sprite half as big, while sprite.scale equals 2 makes it twice as big. Do this. Run the, the program should already include your newly uploaded image, but it's probably not the perfect size. Use sprite.scale to change the size of your kite sprite. Okay, so hint the order of your code matters. You need to add sprite.scale after you've created the sprite, but before you draw the sprite with draw sprites. Okay, so here we are creating the sprites. Let's see if there's a particular spot that we need to put it. I'm thinking I'm putting, I'm going to put sprite scale right here underneath where I created the sprite. So you don't want to put it at the top because then it won't work. But if you put it down here, and let's make it uh, four times smaller. So we're going to do that by doing 0 0.25. All right. And that should make it four times smaller. Oh, why didn't that work? Oh, okay. Again, we have this issue. It says we can't figure out what sprite is. I forgot to name this kite because that's the variable we're referring to. All right, perfect. Look at that. It's on the edge of the string. I wish the background was transparent and not white, but we're going to move on because that looks pretty good.